Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Crossword Cybersecurity PLC Full Year Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. It could be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just please simply type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Uh, we'll send you an email to notify you when they're able for your review on the platform. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll, and if you'd be so kind to give that your attention, we would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to Tom Ilube, CEO of Crossword Cybersecurity. Good morning to you, Tom. Good morning, uh, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to Crossword's investor presentation of our 2020 results uh, and how 2021 is shaping up. Uh, I'm Tom Ilube, Chief Executive of Crossword Cybersecurity, and in addition to our chairman, Sir Richard Dearlove, I will, I will be joined over the next hour by Mary Dowd, our Chief Financial Officer, Stuart Jubb, uh, MD of Consulting, and Jake Holloway, our Chief Product Officer. And we will cover 2020 performance, 2021 outlook, um, expanding our product portfolio, talk about consulting's great progress, the uh, work we're starting to do in Oman, uh, the board changes that we've made over the last day or so, and uh, the financials. But first, I would like to introduce you to our chairman, Sir Richard Dearlove. Sir Richard has a broad perspective in business, cybersecurity, and world affairs from his various roles, current and previous over the years, as former chief of the Secret Intelligence Service, current chair of trustees of the University of London, chair of Ascot Underwriting. Uh, he will speak for five to 10 minutes on crossword cybersecurity, um, the Gulf region where he has some experience, the wider economy as we emerge from the uh, pandemic and the impact of Brexit. So uh, welcome Sir Richard and uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Tom, thanks for that uh, kind introduction and can I repeat the warm welcome uh, to investors uh, interested in crossword and um, I'm happy to make some introductory comments for our update on um, Crossword's, I think, significant progress during 2020. Uh, there's no question, and we can all agree on this, that 2020 was by all measures a year unlike any other. But um, I'm really pleased to be able to report that Crossword performed well in these difficult circumstances, and we weathered the pandemic uh, successfully. Um, we can show growth of 25%. And I think we've built a strong platform, which we can now exploit uh, this year. Um, some general observations about the wider domestic economy. Um, I think with the uncertainty of Brexit behind us, we now uh, face a period of probably unprecedented growth. And I think there's general agreement in that prediction amongst economists. And I think um, we're also uh, facing some significant new international opportunities as the uncertainty of Brexit begins to recede. And I think that um, Crossword is actually very well placed to take advantage of the domestic uh, opportunities I've referred to. And certainly on the international side, we're looking at new opportunities as well. Um, I think one of the features of 2020, if we needed reminding, was our phenomenal dependence on IT uh, to keep the economy functioning. And, you know, we've all learned a huge amount about how to use it, how to exploit this extraordinary uh, network of technical links that have become part of everyday life. But of course, um, behind that issue is an issue of security. And uh, Crossword stands at the center of that uh, problem, as it were, and solutions to that problem. And I think the opportunities for us 
are enhanced because of the sector, uh, the strategic sector that we now occupy. And just one or two sort of examples of uh, the importance of security. I mean, you will all be familiar with the solar winds hack, for example. And, uh, you know, more recently, the closure of the colonial uh, pipeline on the east coast of the United States. Um, it also occurred to me, uh, thinking uh, about the arrest of Roman Protasevich, what that implied for cybersecurity. Um, if you think about it, uh, the plane couldn't have been intercepted without, I think, probably the Russians rather than Belarus, having um, extensive knowledge, probably derived from emails, from phone intercepts. And I would imagine from perhaps hacking into the Ryanair computer. Uh, and it just is another reminder of how crucial all aspects of cyber, cyber security have become on an almost daily basis. Um, I mean, Tom uh, mentioned the Gulf and the Middle East, and um, I just wanted to refer to our plans for Crossword to open an office in Amman, which will cover, obviously, the domestic Omani opportunities, which I think are significant, and also the broader Gulf region. Um, it happens to be a country where I have had extensive experience as a close advisor to uh, His Majesty um, Sultan Qaboos, who of course was recent, recently deceased. Um, but I've been a frequent visitor to the region and have maintained a lot of contacts there. And um, I'm absolutely confident that um, Crossword uh, can thrive in this market and extend uh, its um, products to other areas of the Gulf. Of course, Oman is perhaps the UK's closest ally in the region, is a country of strategic importance because of its geolocation. And I think it's a thoroughly appropriate place for us to establish an office. And um, I've recently had some meetings with Amani officials to uh, discuss the office and they welcome hugely our initiative. Um, I think an important change is the development of the crossword uh, board. Um, I'd certainly like to thank, and the company would like to thank Professor David Stupples and Gordon Matthews for their huge contribution over the early years of Crossword's development. Um, and both of them um, have stepped down. And in their place, uh, we welcome Dr. Robert Rolls and Tara Kemlin jones who have both formally joined the board today. I mean, Robert uh, is a very experienced uh, Chief Information Security Officer and a former KPMG partner who has been involved with us for a while and he's been chairing both our consulting business and the advisory board that we have. And Tara, uh, a new arrival, has extensive investment banking and merger and acquisition experience in the UK and in continental Europe. And of course, I think we feel that her knowledge and contacts will be of huge importance to us as uh, Crossword considers its plans for scaling up. So uh, the stage that we will be entering um, in the next few months is that stage of building the size of the company. I think we expect um, significant organic growth, both domestically and overseas, and of course, um, by acquisition as well as we're looking at various strategic purchases and options. Um, anyway, I'd like to thank you for your support, uh, for your interest um, in Crossword as an exciting um, cyber security company. And uh, we certainly look forward as a team to uh, developing on your expectations and as it were, enhancing the value of your investments in the company 
over the coming months and years. And um, I'm very honoured to continue in the role of non-executive chairman and I look forward to working with Tom and his team. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Sir Richard. It's a very, very good uh, context and overview. Um, so if I go on to the 2020 uh, summary, but first let me uh, just remind you, sorry, if we go back slide, uh, who the team is. I've mentioned Mary Dowd, uh, Jake Holloway will appear as well, uh, and Stuart Jubb. Sean Arrowsmith is our sales uh, director, uh, and he uh, is, is out selling this morning, so he's not on this call. Um, but we have a very strong and stable uh, and experienced management uh, team. Okay, if I move on to the next slide. 2020 summary. So uh, as was mentioned, we delivered 25% revenue growth uh, in uh, 2020, which for us, we were really pleased with, given that it was the toughest economic year in, uh, in recent memory. Um, and so navigating that year uh, was, was incredible and to grow by 25% top line, uh, we were really pleased with. And within that, product and consulting revenue expanded by 39%. We also do some development work, um, paid for development work. We've, we've been gradually reducing that as we focus on our core activities of product and consulting. So product and consulting expanding by just under 40%, uh, delivering 25% growth uh, overall. Rizikon Pro, which we'll say a bit more about later on, um, we launched a version of it called uh, Rizikon Pro for small and medium-sized enterprises in July 2020, because we really wanted to look at how we could transform the sales cycle, accelerate uh, sales, uh, and get a larger number of users of the product that we could convert into paying customers. And that's working, as you'll hear later on, uh, really well. We really are growing the number of users uh, rapidly and starting to convert them into paying customers. We signed another uh, partnership agreement, uh, this time with Satisnet in March 2020, one of the leading IT security resellers, uh, and they join our partner program alongside Leonardo, the global defense contractor, and NCC, the leading cybersecurity provider. Our approach to partnerships is a limited number of meaningful partnerships rather than a large number of small partnerships, and that's uh, what we're continuing to build on the partner side. We've been working with IASME, the National Cybersecurity Center's sole cyber essentials partner, and delivering using our Rizikon platform an IoT device uh, certification platform uh, uh, service, which is, which is going really well. We're very happy with that as well. Uh, and as you'll hear a bit more about, uh, we've been working with Verifiable Credentials, uh, a company to, that uh, provides verifiable digital certificates. And in particular, we've been working with them on a uh, Innovate UK funded project for the NHS around COVID certificates. Uh, the conversations with verifiable credentials, uh, as you know, uh, led uh, to our acquisition of that company, uh, which was announced uh, this morning. And again, we'll say a bit more about that uh, as we progress. Um, we were awarded a really good Innovate UK grant, 157K, uh, to investigate issues around broader supply chain risk management in the manufacturing supply chains in particular. Uh, and we're working with Liverpool John Moores University uh, and several commercial partners on that. The award uh, came in December 2020. Uh, the income for that will be received during 2021. Consulting has been growing very well, uh, and in particular, consulting as well as project work also delivers recurring revenue services via its virtual CISO, VCSO proposition that Stuart will talk about. And we've managed to grow that two and a half times during 2019. And that gives us visibility of consulting revenue uh, going forwards uh, as well. Um, we did our first piece of work in Oman. With the, uh, with the Sultan Qaboos University and the UK Oman Digital Hub. Uh, that's led to further progress in that country and we'll be setting up a uh, company there, uh, Crossword Oman, at some point this year. And we've got into a partnership with uh, an Omani group, the Al Rawahi uh, group, which I'll say a bit more about in, in a moment. Uh, Dr. Robert Coles took on the role of non-executive chair of our consulting business 
last year and as was mentioned uh, uh, following yesterday's AGM has joined our PLC board uh, as well and as I mentioned Sean Arrowsmith uh, joined us as our first group sales director and has an immediate impact on reshaping the sales team building it up repositioning how we go to market uh, around the product and making good progress on that straight away in terms of 2021, 2021 and beyond is really all about scaling up. Yes, Crossword is moving to the next stage of our journey. All the foundations are in place. Now it's about really scaling up the business, both through organic growth uh, and through acquisition. Uh, and that's what we're doing. We did a uh, 1.6 million equity fundraise in February this year. As you'll know, with the AGM, we also did a uh, share split. Um, a 10 to 1 share split. Um, so the equity fundraise we did was at uh, £2.60 a share then, equivalent to 26p a share uh, now. Uh, and as at today, Crossword shares uh, are trading at about 42p uh, a share. So we're pleased on progress on, on that side. Um, the uh, We've signed a uh, MOU and got into a relationship with the Chartered Institute of Information Security Professionals, uh, CSEC, uh, to offer CSEC members, and there are 10,000 of them, uh, free access to a version of Rizikam Pro with easy upgrade to full functionality. Uh, we started rolling that out in the last couple of months and, and have seen a very good take up on that side and we're out there talking to other membership bodies uh, along the same lines as well and expect to be doing more of those uh, uh, during this year and beyond and as a result of that um, we now have about 200 well in fact over 250 business customers that are using Rizikon which is a tenfold increase uh, to where we were at the beginning of the uh, the year and the back end of last year and across them, they have thousands of suppliers uh, creating Rizikan accounts and providing information. So Rizikan is really getting out there and getting embedded into a large number uh, of organizations, both through, free using the light version and paying uh, customers. We're working with the University of Glasgow on a new project, Privacy Risk and Compliance Project, helping create a new software product aimed at privacy governance uh, and we hope to take that forwards with them uh, in some form. Um, IASME I've already mentioned and I mentioned the MOU with the Al Rawahi Holdings, uh, a group in uh, the Sultanate of Oman who are going to get involved in establishing our uh, business there. Uh, that group uh, has about 10,000 employees, works across construction, oil and gas, various other sectors, both in Oman and in the UAE, and has extensive contacts uh, across the region. Um, our office will be based in their headquarters in, in Muscat, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll have access to a lot of contacts, companies, relationships, and resources through that relationship. So we're very pleased about that. Um, and as I mentioned, the uh, uh, we acquired uh, verifiable credentials uh, announced it this morning. Uh, that's increased our product portfolio. We now have three products uh, in in the portfolio, and we'll continue to uh, go from there. Uh, and uh, Tara uh, and Robert uh, have joined uh, joined the board, um, which we're we're very pleased about. Tara has extensive uh, investment banking and M and A uh, experience, uh, and uh, Robert, as a former KPMG partner. Uh, in, in information security and then a CISO at GlaxoSmithKline, one of the world's largest companies, really understands what it is that CISOs uh, are looking for. Um, so I'll hand over to Jake now to speak about uh, verifiable uh, credentials, which we've added to our product portfolio. So Jake, over to you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, uh, great timing. Uh, we have today announced the acquisition of Verifiable Credentials Limited. Uh, VCL, as I call them, it is a pre-revenue University of Kent spin-off that we've been uh, working with in, in terms of COVID certificates at uh, East Kent and at Just Trust for a while. And it was created by Professor David Chadwick. David is a global expert in the uh, area of digital identities and credentials. Uh, I'll explain what that is in a minute. And he's actually one of the co-authors of a new uh, worldwide web consortium standard 
on verifiable credentials. Now, digital credentials uh, are things like tickets uh, that you might hold on your phone, membership cards, access cards, certificates that can be held digitally, uh, things like educational achievement certificates, for example. Uh, and and uh, the, these are proliferating, as we all know. Verifiable credentials are ones that can be verified at the point of uh, presenting them to an access point or to a person who's uh, at, at the gate of a, an event, for example. And these are very secure. Uh, and importantly, if they're consistent with the W3C standard, these maintain the user's privacy uh, and, and prevent them from being tracked as they move around uh, presenting their credentials. Uh, VCL's product allows organizations to issue these verifiable credentials consistent with the standard from their systems to holders who hold them in a secure wallet. Uh, and it allows them to be verified at the point of access, like a boarding gate for a flight, going into an event, maybe accessing a building physically, uh, maybe presenting information to an employer, like your degree certificate or, or what have you. So this is a, a, a massively uh, growing area. And for us, this is about acquiring a new product that is, is going to join our product portfolio and being joined by a truly global expert and thought leader in, in what's a, a really exciting and, and, and growing area of digital identity and digital creden uh, credentials. We'll initially be targeting opportunities in education because of our strong connections with universities. And, and, and training companies uh, in their use of business credentials uh, in association with our Rizikin product. Uh, and uh, uh, we're, we're looking at the area of, of staff passports as well. So I'll hand back to uh, Mary now uh, for the rest of the presentation. Good morning, everybody. So I'd just like to refer to the, the 2021 outlook for the rest of the year. We expect revenue to more revenue growth to more than double the rate of 2020. So we achieved 25% revenue growth in 2020. So we're expecting at least 50% revenue growth in 2021. Uh, rapid rollout of Risk and Pro on the back of the partnerships and membership deals that Tom has referred to. We're expecting to grow by acquisition and organically. So we've had our first acquisition announced yesterday, Verifiable Credentials Limited. And we're actively looking at other acquisitions and we will be growing organically as well. Identiproof will be developed, this is the VCL product, and we'll be bringing that to market, aiming to be a market leader in verifiable credentials-based systems. We expect to establish our overseas subsidiary in Oman and anticipate rolling out our products and services in that region. And we're actively exploring the possibility of acquiring a cybersecurity consulting company to bring in additional clients and capability as well as boosting revenue. So the cybersecurity market, we know that this is a growing market and there's some numbers, very large numbers on this slide. The global market is expected to be $153 billion in 2020 with a compound annual growth rate of um, 12%. The UK government estimated the UK cybersecurity market to be worth 8.3 billion in 2019, and the EU cybersecurity market projected to exceed 65 billion dollars by 2025. And the estimated global cost of data breaches in 2022 is expected to reach six trillion dollars, six trillion pounds. In a recent uh, PwC CEO survey. The CEOs stated, or one third of the CEOs stated, that they plan to increase investment in cybersecurity and data privacy by double digits over the next three years. And this is on the back of um, cyber attacks on critical national infrastructure around the world, with the colonial pipeline hack disrupting US East Coast fuel supplies. In the last couple of weeks, we've had the Irish Health Service Executive Conti ransomware attack. And Hiscock say that one small business is hacked every 19 seconds in the UK. And Carbon Black reports 88% of UK companies have suffered data breaches in the last 12 months. So we know this is a growing market that Crossword is operating in. Uh, Tom has already referred to the, the leadership team. So, Sir Richard, you've heard from. Tom is our CEO. Our advisory board is Dr. Robert Coles, who has been referred to already. Professor Nick Jennings, who's at Imperial College, and he previously served as the UK government chief scientific advisor for national security. The general, Sir Nick Houghton, who's previously been chief of defence staff of the British Armed Forces. And Sean Arrowsmith joined the executive team in January 2020 as Group Sales Director. 
And Stuart, who you'll hear from shortly, is the managing director of our consulting business. So a summary of our products. So we have risk and assurance. This is an enterprise class supplier risk and assurance SaaS product, which originated from City University of London. Nixer Cyber ML is our second product to market. Uh, it's based on machine learning. It's an application protection against credential attacks, and it's using al algorithms developed from Imperial College London. Identity Proof, which has just been acquired, is a verifiable credentials compatible mid middleware and wallet technology. And this originated from the University of Kent. Jake will give us some more details on these products shortly. We have Consulting, which is uh, cybersecurity consulting, which is Stuart's team. We also have BizGen and CyberAl, which are two companies which we helped to co-create. Um, BizGen came out of Warwick University and EPFL, and we supply software development services to BizGen and have a license agreement with them. CyberAl came out of Coventry University and we helped set them up and received sweet equity for our service, our support with that. And we continue to own a minority stake and we haven't invested in either BizGen or CyberAl except our services. I'd like to hand over to Jake to uh, go into the products in more detail. Thanks, Mary. Well, let me just briefly introduce Rizik and Assurance to you. Now, the, the problem that Rizik and Assurance solves is really the scalability of supply assurance and supply risk management. Most companies who, who conduct uh, supply risk management uh, and supply assurance are sending out manual questionnaires, maybe attachments. Uh, and this is not very secure. This is not very scalable. It, it, it's, it's not very efficient. Uh, and Rizik and Assurance is a platform that helps Take con you take control of supply assurance uh, and supply risk management. And as, as we've seen with things like Brexit, the things like uh, the pandemic, um, uh, and, and cybersecurity issues, as, as Sir Richard mentioned earlier, the, 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 the solar winds hack, your suppliers are incredibly important to you. And su supply chain resilience is a significant factor in all business com uh, competitiveness and uh, profitability. So, so uh, Risk and Assurance is aimed at the, the procurement and supply management team. It contains a large number of intelligent questionnaires on multiple subjects, including cybersecurity, but also things like modern slavery. And this risk and assurance information rolls up to very easy to understand uh, 360 degree supply supplier uh, scorecards, which then in turn roll up to an assurance framework dashboard, which gives you a 360 complete view across the risks in your supply chain. And this is used by, by a number of businesses. Next slide, please. Uh, we have three editions uh, of the product, and we've mentioned Rizikan and uh, Pro, the, mo the most recent of those. Rizikan Enterprise is is the uh, the, the version for large, uh, big organisations, uh, and, and these are generally fairly long sale cycles, relatively large amounts of of, of, of annual re recurring revenue. Resigan Pro we, we uh, introduced last year, and this has been very successful. This is a, a much uh, a more modular, out of the box, ready to go uh, subscription based service. You can sign up online. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and we, ha we have relatively short uh, sales cycles. This is the version that we've been promoting via our partnerships with with uh, company uh, with organisations, membership organisations like CSEC and, and 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 others. And then we have a a, a, a sort of a bespoke version and, and and service that we offer through our partners. Uh, and and these are potentially very large deals aimed at at defence, government supply, uh, national critical infrastructure, and things like that. Next slide, please. So um, as we said earlier, we've seen a great deal of, 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 of scaling up of our Rizikan uh, sales, mainly through our, our, our investment in uh, our sales channel and our partners, such as the CSEC. So we offered 10,000 of uh, CSEC members the, uh, the opportunity to, to, to sign up with a, a, an initial free account, and, and then they can sign up, uh, scale up, and, and purchase uh, additional users. So that's, that's been extremely successful. Uh, we're now addressing uh, other membership organizations to, to, to offer the same uh, opportunity. We've got clients across uh, multiple sectors. You can see from the the, uh, uh, the, the logos there from, from Camel Laird to the Nursing and Midwifery Council to local authorities, uh, uh, New Versa Nuclear Company, for example. And, and this is a, a, a big uh, growing logo wall uh, that we have. 
Uh, I think the use that was being mentioned before by IASME is really critical. IASME are essentially delivering standards on behalf of the NCSC, um, and the the new IoT standard is being delivered through uh, the audit against that standard is being delivered through the RISCAN platform, and we we have uh, adapted it to be specifically usable by a large scale uh, sort of Quango type organization in this in this respect that is uh, enabling assessors to themselves go out and audit against a uh, a national standard. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Nixa is very different uh, a kind of product. It's a combination of, of of consulting services delivered by a consulting team and plug-in technology that uh, that organisations can plug into their applications uh, uh, on their on their own premises. And we have some very interesting large-scale implementations. This is realistically a a relatively small number of deals, but all uh, very substantial uh, over time. What's been interesting about the pandemic is there's been an absolute explosion in credential stuffing attacks. I'll explain what they are in a minute uh, during during the pandemic. Um, and indeed, 80% of successful hacks start with a with a credential stuffing attack. Uh, there are existing protections uh, help, but but still organizations are continually being hacked. And most of that starts with a what, what's called a credential stuffing attack. Uh, enterprise and, and SaaS vendors, enterprise and SaaS vendors, essentially what they need to do is they need to be able to distinguish when someone has taken over one of their customers' accounts between normal user behavior and malicious activity inside their application. So it needs to be intelligent, uh, intelligent software that's plugged into directly into their applications. Uh, and the way to do this is with using machine learning algorithms. It's very easy to say, oh, let's just use machine learning, but actually it's not as easy as all that. And it's hard to to, to, to apply that. Uh, it's hard to get the skills to do that. And this is why we created Nixa CyberML to effectively help organizations very rapidly move into the area of user behavior analytics to detect good from bad users uh, using machine learning. And we offer them a plugin. Credential stuffing uh, is, is a, a very, very common problem as much as 20% of the activity on the internet is in fact credential stuffing attacks, attackers obtain very, very large databases of usernames and passwords from breaches. Most of you and your details will be in some of those breaches uh, and uh, they're available. They don't have to go to the dark web. They're available on the internet. They're available everywhere. Uh, uh, and they're up to the trillions now, really. And they use attack tools or, or automated bots. Uh, you, you, you may have heard them as, as bots to continually, repeatedly attempt logins on a large number of multiple target sites. And when they uh, when they get a, a hit, when somebody has effectively reused an, a, a, a username password combination from one site uh, that they've reused it on another site, they can log in, they take control of that account. And they may, uh, they may then exploit that in some way, but what they do is build up a huge bank of these uh, compromised accounts or accounts that have been taken over and typically sell them to other criminals uh, further up the chain for exploitation. Uh, and this is a background activity continues on ongoing uh, all the time. And uh, yes, over to Stuart, who is going to talk about consulting. Thanks, Jake. So as, as Tom and Sir Richard mentioned, last year was a tough year. Um, but after some disruption through COVID at the beginning of the year, we saw business pick up in May or June. Um, and we actually managed to grow by 39%, as Mary said, which we were pretty pleased with, given the tough trading environment and Q4 last year was actually our best quarter to date since we started consulting in 2016. We've had over 70 clients to date since, since we started, which gives us a strong client base to work with um, and go back to. Uh, but also it gives us um, clients we can take existing and future products to. Um, and we've worked across multiple sectors, including professional services, nuclear, insurance, financial services and technology. We've been moving up the value chain in terms of size of clients. For the, for the first few years, we deliberately targeted small and mid-cap clients uh, because the sales cycle was shorter, but also building up relationships with some of the larger companies. And we're now starting to see those relationships develop into clients. And we've got three FTSE 250 clients and also one of the world's largest insurance brokers. 
Uh, these companies tend to have larger and longer pro projects and you tend to work with them for quite a long time when you get in. Um, and we should see that continue to develop in 2021 and, and beyond. Um, as Tom mentioned, we are very focused on increasing our virtual CISO revenue as we want to have a strong base of recurring revenue to have good visibility of future sales. And we were able to increase this by two and a half times in 2020 compared to 2029. Uh, we launched this service in 2019 and it allows companies to use Crossword as their outsourced cybersecurity team. Um, and this is cheaper, more effective and more efficient for some clients than hiring their full, uh, a full time um, cybersecurity team. Um, and it's something, again, will continue uh, next year and beyond. But we're looking at potential acquisitions, focusing on companies who have complementary services um, and will continue to do that. And the signing of the MOU to open the office in Amman is very interesting because that will allow us to look at opportunities in the wider Gulf where we'd need uh, potentially people based out there. And we also would believe we can scale that by using consultants in London uh, while we build up the capability in Open Barn. We recently hired a senior director from Deloitte who has over 20 years experience in cybersecurity and a good network. And we're hopeful that we will see some of his network starting to convert um, into clients over the next six months. And I'd expect us to grow the consulting team from 14 to around about 20 by the end of the year. And just as a, as a reminder, um, you know, consulting is strategic to the product business as often our clients uh, want implementation support when um, buying our products, um, particularly important with uh, Rizikin, as Jade talked about. And we're also able to introduce our products into consulting clients and vice versa. Um, and um, also of equal importance, um, we're able to provide market intelligence into the product development and innovate existing products and also help with ideas for future products. And quite a few larger companies are looking ahead three years on how to solve some of the future problems and giving them access to some of the university research um, helps to helps them to, um, to, to look at those problems. And that sets us apart from other consultancies. And I'll hand you back to Mary. Thanks, Stuart. Um, just going to give a summary of uh, Crossword. So we were founded in March 2014 and we were admitted to AIM in December 2018. We have two offices, one in London and one in Krakow in Poland. Our software team sit in Poland. Uh, we've recently moved office from Richmond to Waterloo. We took advantage of a break clause in our Richmond lease. As staff said that they, they weren't didn't want to come back to the office full time, so we've taken a smaller space with cost saving. Um, in our new Waterloo office. We have a total staff of 46 at the latest count. We've engaged with more than 40 plus universities. Rizikin Enterprise was launched in September 2019 and Rizikin Pro was launched in July 2020. Nixer Cyber ML was launched in November 2019 and Verifiable Credentials Limited with Identity Proof was acquired in May 2021, just yesterday. We're experiencing strong product revenue growth, 2020 revenue growth of 25%. Within that product and consulting revenue growth was 39% in 2020. And we're expecting that revenue growth of 25% to more than double in 2021. And consulting commenced work with a major, in a major project for one of the world's largest insurance brokers in 2020. So here we have the highlights of our a summary of our PL. So our revenue of 1.6 million, that was 25% revenue growth, as we've stated. We had 10% increase in cost of sales and a positive gross margin in 2020. We had a loss for the year of 2.3 million. The increase in our operating costs was primarily due to expanding the executive team with Sean Arrow Smith coming on board in January 2020 and interest costs relating to the convertible loan notes, which were issued in December 19. Here we have our balance sheet for 2020. Uh, we have right to use assets on our balance sheet, and these are just our office leases. Um, and at the end of 2020, we had cash of 1 million. In February 2021, we raised 1.6 million in equity as well, which obviously isn't reflected on this balance sheet. I'll hand back to Tom now to summarise. 
Great. Well, thanks very much. Thanks, uh, everyone, for, for speaking. Um, so, Crossword, where are we? We 2020, we navigated the pandemic year successfully. We, it was a tough year, uh, a lot of um, sort of quick foot movement to, uh, uh, to get things right, but we managed to grow 25%, uh, which we were really pleased with in a very difficult year. We managed to build the team and we emerged into 2021 with real momentum, which was which was great. 2021 and beyond is about scaling up the business. We have the core elements of the business in place, um, and we are really now pushing both on the organic side uh, and on the acquisition side. On the Rizikan side, as you've seen, we're getting Rizikan out there to more and more companies. We What we found is that if we get the product into the hands of the right people in the companies, uh, then they get attached to it and they move on to acquiring it. And we've now got it into the hands of over 250 uh, companies across the UK. We'll be doing a lot more of that, uh, pushing it hard. Um, and uh, and that's really important. Um, on the international side, as was mentioned, we'll be going outside of the UK in 2021 and beyond, first into the Gulf with our partnership in Oman, and we expect to see some interesting things happening there over the coming years. Uh, and then I think we'll be looking at continental Europe and seeing if there's an opportunity for us to do something uh, in that territory. We have evolved the board by bringing on Robert, a very experienced uh, cybersecurity professional, KPMG, uh, GlaxoSmithKline onto the board, uh, and also by bringing Tara uh, onto the board, an extremely experienced investment banking professional with a large amount of M&A uh, experience. Uh, she has personally uh, executed a, a, a lot of uh, acquisitions uh, over the years. Uh, as you've heard, we've acquired uh, VCL, and that which we announced this morning, that adds a third product to our portfolio. Uh, Crossword is a portfolio company in terms of product. We're not a one product company. We're building up our portfolio of products. Uh, and I expect that over time, we'll end up with between four and six strong cybersecurity products in the market. Uh, and consulting has been growing strongly and will continue to grow strongly, as Stuart said, uh, 70 clients that they've worked with over the years. Uh, and if you add that to the 250 business relationships we have on the Rizikan side, we've now got really a large group of uh, organizations that know Crossword, that have interacted with us, that have done something with us, over 300 organizations that one way or another uh, have made use of Crosswords products and services, uh, and we can offer our new products and services into that uh, relationship base as well as expanding it, which I expect to do. Uh, as was mentioned, we're considering uh, other acquisitions. Uh, there are some interesting opportunities out there, uh, and being an aim listed company, uh, we're able to uh, take advantage of those, which we will do. Um, the team is strong, it's settled. Uh, it's motivated, um, and we're looking for some major breakthroughs this year uh, as we scale up. So I feel that we're in really good shape. We've got an exciting year ahead of us, uh, and the next couple of years uh, will be very exciting as we scale the business up as well. So thank you very much for your time with the presentation section. Uh, what I'm now going to do is pick up on some of the questions uh, that have been asked in the, in the Q&A. So I think we're going to go to... Uh, video format, uh, Mark, if that's okay. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Tom. Uh, and also to Stuart, Mary, Jake, and of course, Sir Richard. So if I could ask you just to turn your cameras uh, on, um, that's perfect. Um, thank you so much indeed for doing so. And of course, if you would require the slides, just please let me know and I'll bring them immediately back up for you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those investor questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor Meet company dashboard. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is important to the company, and immediately after this presentation has ended, you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Um, Tom, perhaps I could hand back to you, and if I could ask you to read out the question 
perhaps who it's from and where appropriate to give a response. Um, that'd be great. And I'll pick up from you at the end. Great. Thanks very much. OK, so the first question is from Darren. Uh, and the question is this. Crossword is very much a B2B play, a bigger ticket, but perhaps a longer sell. Is that likely to continue to be the focus going forward? And would you ever consider consumer products? Um, so, Darren, in answer to that, we are a B2B company. Um, when we set it up and going forwards, we are a company that will sell to businesses. Um, and therefore, we don't envisage ever selling to consumers. In my experience, consumer facing businesses are quite different. Uh, and whenever I've had experience of trying to put both a consumer facing business and a business to business entity into the same organization, it tends not to work that well. You need different people, you know, your marketing director will be a different type of person, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, within businesses, our focus is on commercial businesses primarily. We don't tend ourselves to chase after large government type uh, contracts. Uh, that side of, uh, of business is also quite a specialist area. Uh, we will tend to do that through our partners. So for example, we will bid with Leonardo, the global aerospace partner, for some big government type opportunities. But Crossword is unlikely to be really focused on that ourselves, unless there are opportunistic uh, possibilities. So we are a business to business company, and that's where we're going to focus. However, to your point about the size of those opportunities and the size of the, of the sales cycle, the speed of the sales cycle, the main reason why we introduced Rizikan Pro on the Rizikan side was to accelerate that sales cycle and also to give us a more modular product that could be of interest to, as well as being interest to large companies, also of interest to small and medium sized companies as well, because there are really a large number of those. So, yes, we will try and accelerate our sales cycle by having more modular products as well as enterprise products. But no, we won't be going towards doing purely consumer uh, uh, propositions. That, that's not our, our area of expertise. Um, the second question, uh, and Mary, I'll come to you for this one, was from Abby. Uh, on the recent acquisition, can you confirm if there is any lock in, in the shares that are being issued uh, by the company? Yes, um, thanks, Tom. Uh, yes, there is a lock in, as you would expect, uh, and this kind of arrangement. Um, I'm not sure I should be giving out all of the terms of that right now, but no, you, no. the deal was done on a commercial basis, so you can expect that there would be a lock in. Yeah. There would be a lock in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The third question from Ryan says You, you said you're looking to scale up. Can you talk about the MA pipeline, what you look for in potential targets, size of target, big or small? and how you propose to fund them. Are there any new segments of the market that you would be keener to expand into? Um, Mary, I might ask you to uh, just comment on the market mapping exercise that we've done that, that gives us a, a sort of overview. Uh, and, and then I can comment on, on a couple of other things. And Stuart, you might want to just say a word about the sort of companies on the consulting side. Uh, and then Jake, I might ask you to just comment again, not specifically, but on the sort of companies we might be interested in on the product side. So Mary first. Thanks, Tom. So um, we're on lots of various mailing lists for any acquisitions that come publicly onto the market and we're contacted privately as well. So we're constantly assessing various opportunities and we've taken a proactive approach with actually assess a market mapping the market to see if there are any companies that we specifically want to approach to see if there's an interest in acquisition. And we would be looking at complementary services and products. Um, we would be looking at different skill sets as well, the opportunity to cross sell. So we take quite a, a varied, broad approach to it. OK, uh, and Stuart, um, what, what sort of things are you interested in on the consulting side if they came up? Yeah, thanks, Tom. So I, I think we're primarily looking at companies with complementary services. So we can cross sell our existing services into uh, their client base and we can sell their services in, into our client base. Um, we're, we're looking for pretty well, pretty well established, um, probably um, slots probably no bigger than us, but certainly 
um, from our size to you know maybe half our size. Um, and we're, we're also looking for some founders who um, are ambitious. We want them to buy into the crossword story um, and then form part of the, of the future journey of consulting. Um, yeah. And there's, there's plenty of companies out there with, with that sort of profile. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, and Jake, on the product side, what, what sort of things would catch your eye? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're, we're very uh, proud of our academic uh, connections. Uh, my team tracks around about 190 academic startups uh, that have come out uh, over the last sort of seven, eight years. Um, and we're looking always for interesting product sets in the area of cybersecurity. Verifiable Credentials Limited is a very good example of one. Uh, unique founder, unique skill set, unique product, uh, growing market opportunity, something we're not strong in and we want to move into. So that's the kind of size and shape of, of, of business that we'd be interested in. Thanks, Jake. Okay, so the next question is from Philip. Are clearing banks a target for Rizikan for their SMEs, a potential distribution channel? Yes, abs absolutely. You know, we're, in a previous business that, that I ran, um, one of the ways that we managed to scale up really rapidly was to get into a relationship with uh, an organization that provided services to banks that they then provided to their large customer bases. Uh, and if we were able to get into a relationship with a, a you know, one of the big clearing banks that had maybe half a million or, or whatever uh, SME customers uh, and was able to provide Rizikan as a product to uh, those customers, uh, then that would be uh, tremendous. And you know, we, we are continuously talking to partners. Um, one of the things I've found over the years is that the bigger partners with the larger client bases that they could expose you to, they generally want to see that you've got uh, a lot of traction uh, with other clients before they adopt your product. So what you tend to do is keep talking to them and it can take a year, two years of conversations where they start to look at you, they keep an eye on what you're doing, you keep updating them. And then at some point in their process, they decide actually this is a product that we'd like to take to our client base and then you're in and things really start to accelerate. So we continuously have those conversations, keep them abreast of what we're doing. Uh, but uh, we, we definitely are interested in any organizations that have large numbers of SMEs uh, and would like to provide something additional to them. And actually, uh, given that we're always selling and we're always eager to leverage our contacts and our investor contacts. If any in, uh, investors, shareholders, or anyone on this call uh, has contacts with those sorts of organizations, then please let us know. Um, you know we, all we need is, a, is an introduction and we, we'll follow up uh, on those. Uh, Philip has also asked, is CyberL a potential acquisition target? Um, we've got a good relationship with CyberL. When we created it, I was uh, chair of it uh, and I recruited the uh, chief executive and the chief technology officer and helped uh, bring funding into, uh, into CyberL. So uh, we've, we've, we've created it. We understand it really well. Uh, our development team worked on their product. Uh, for quite some time to get it up and running. And e even today, we go into uh, various sales situations or make introductions uh, on both sides to them. So we do have a close relationship with them. CyberOwl is doing well uh, as a standalone company. It's raised money itself and so forth. Uh, so we'll stay close to them and, uh, and continue to keep keep that relationship warm uh, and see where it ends up uh, over time uh, but either way we we benefit because we we have a stake uh, in cyber owl um, so we'll, we'll just see how that develops over time um, andy has asked uh, sorry if i missed it but what proportion of your revenue is recurring and how do you see this uh, moving forwards um, mary i might hand this to you for any any comment but in general as a company what we're trying to do is build up a portfolio of intellectual property based products that have been sourced out of universities or university relationships. And we want those products to be recurring revenue products. That is the idea of what we're doing with Crossword. So we are trying to build up 
a multiple streams of recurring revenue products supported by significant recurring and non-recurring consulting revenue. We wouldn't typically take a product to market if it wasn't a recurring revenue product. So if you look out for Crossword in, into the future, you will see the recurring revenue line increasing significantly over time as a proportion of our total revenue. I don't know, Mary, if we break out our recurring and non-recurring at the moment. Uh, we don't, but we do break out how much of our revenue is product revenue. And in 2020, it was approximately 10%. Um, but to add to that, uh, the consulting revenue, which Stuart referred to, is, is project and and recurring revenue. The virtual chief information security off offering, which we have, which grew by two and a half times in 2020, is recurring revenue. So that is an increasing um, element of recurring revenue as well. Yeah. So so we are we are building a recurring revenue company. The nature of recurring revenue companies, I don't know if anyone's built, built one before I have, is that you, you essentially trade off, you, you have lower recurring revenue to start with as you build up the client base um, compared to if you just went out with one-off chunky licenses. You can get sort of high revenue numbers with one-off chunky licenses up front. But if you go down the recurring route, you tend to have lower recurring revenue at first and it gradually builds up and the name of the game is to get your product out and into the hands of as many clients as possible recurring revenue paying clients and then as that flywheel starts to move you start to see that recurring revenue uh, accelerate um, the last question before we wrap up uh, on here from Neda is what percentage of the Rizikan software, and uh, Jake, this will come in your direction, what percentage of the Rizikan software and or other products uh, changes year on year, i.e. how fast does the moat grow in, in the sense, I think in the sense, Neda, of, um, you know, are these sort of static products, once they're built, they stay the same, or are we continuously developing uh, and evolving the product uh, and therefore sort of keeping that distance between uh, competitors. And, and you might want to say something about our development approach and, and sales cycle uh, as well. Uh, yeah. Um, well, in terms of our, our development uh, velocity, we probably add about 50 to 75 percent every year of in terms of code base and, and and functionality i mean it's a it's a loose measure but we have teams on on, on our products it's a, a big part of, of of my team in krakow our engineering team is to to continually move the product forward and all of our products have active teams and um, we have uh, significant multi-year roadmaps for, for for all products and and with the acquisition of uh, VCL will be doing a, that kind of planning for the identity proof, and I, I expect that will become a major stream of, of development activity. Uh, d do you think that answers the question, yeah. Tom? I, I think that's fine, Nader. If there's more questions on that, please feel free to, to contact us, and, and we can we can talk about what we do on the development side. Uh, Philip has just dropped a comment in uh, about the more customers you acquire, the greater recurring revenue. Uh, and has offered to, to help and we'd be delighted to, to hear from you, Philip. So please do get in touch and we'll, we'll follow up on that. So we're just coming up to the hour now. So I'd just like to uh, say thank you uh, to everyone very much for, uh, for attending this session. Um, I hope that you got what you wanted. I wanted to put the, the bulk of the exec team in front of you as well so you can see all of us and, and hear about uh, what we're doing and also obviously give you the opportunity to meet and hear from our chairman, Sir Richard, uh, as well. Uh, we're always happy to take follow-up uh, questions. Uh, Mary or uh, the rest of the team uh, will uh, are happy to uh, speak to people uh, offline uh, as well. So thank you very much uh, for your time. And Mark, I think I hand back to That's you. Most kind, Tom. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you to the board for updating investors today. Um, could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the board and the management team of Crossword Cybersecurity, I'd like to thank you for attending today's session. Um, that now concludes the presentation. So thank you once again and good uh, morning to you all.